morning and have a blessed Christmas day for each one of us today. I hope that today we will be able to focus on the spiritual aspect and message of Christmas instead of being carried away by the revelry of the world. Let us focus on what the Bible says about Christmas. So let's read our scriptures for today, this Christmas day on Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 14. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Well, let's focus on the good news of great joy, which the angels announced to the shepherds during that first Christmas day. The spirit of Christmas should be of spiritual joy. And as I said, it should be different from what the world is celebrating. It's more about revelry. We must focus on what the Bible's accounts of the Christmas in the in in the first um, Christmas that we can read in the scriptures. Now, what we see here in this story is that there were shepherds who were out there in the field watching their flocks. Now, let's remember the background. Under the Roman rule, the people were fine, had, had found that and, and felt the, the greens and the difficulty of life. They were under this Roman rule, uh, under the colonizers, the Romans. And they had to spend countless sleepless nights watching their ship. And maybe they were asking this question, is there a way out from this rut? They may have asked this for, we know that in, in times of difficulties, in times of hardships, we might question about whether there is a hope in this particular situation that we are in. Now, the plight or the condition of the shepherds will tell us that they were really out there because they, they cannot just leave their, their ship and they were really working very hard as if uh, their, their kind of work corresponds to the work that many of us have also, that we have some overtimes, we have to spend a lot of times in the office, in the workplace. Maybe in this Christmas day, you don't have a day off. You even cannot spend time with your families because you are in your workplaces, just like these shepherds. They could have slept well and comfortably in their homes, but they have to be out there watching their flocks. That's the reality. Sometimes we have these difficulties of life, and the reality sometimes will prompt us to question whether is there really a, a hope and something better out of this rut or out of this routine that I have. And in that very moment, unexpectedly, the glory of the Lord shone around them. The shepherds were there and they announced about the good news of great joy. And it came during the time that they needed it most. Now let's not forget that the blessings of God, particularly the grace of God's salvation, appeared to men when men did not expect it. The grace of salvation appeared to us, according to Titus 2 verse 11, its appearance is like a light shining. It's just like you are in a dark place and somebody switches the, and, and the light and then the light just flush the room or brighten the room in a moment. It's just like that. 
you know, they were watching their ship without expecting anything to happen. Perhaps in their minds, it was just another ordinary evening. But the angels appeared suddenly. And we know that this was not accidental nor incidental. It was the plan of God. Paul accounted in Galatians 4, verse 4, that in the fullness of time, the Lord Jesus Christ was born of a woman, born under the law. So Jesus' timing when he came into this world to be born in that manger was not incidental. It was the plan of God. Even then, with that, when they were knocking the doors of the inn, the hotels, whether they could lodge that night when they arrived from Nazareth, because of the census that they had to go back to, to the home places in Judea. It is as if that they were really coming in a wrong time because nobody can accommodate them except that manger that was vacant. But it was really the right time, appropriate time, the fullness of time. The angel announced to them what Isaiah has written 700 years later or earlier. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This baby to be born humbly in that manger is not an ordinary baby. He is the Savior who is Christ the Lord. Now quite different than everyone has expected. Like the shepherds, they were maybe amazed or shocked they were really wondering whether the thing that they saw was real or not. The sign or the sight of the king's birth could have shocked them also. But they, nevertheless, they believe us. The angels said to them that you shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes in a manger. That's an expected place for a king to be born. Now, I think the lessons that we can or the lesson that we can learn here is that blessings in life may come at seemingly wrong time, in a wrong place, and maybe to wrong people, to inappropriate people. That's the grace of God. The grace of God appears to us in a very unexpected time and to us very undeserving people. Why Jesus has to be revealed in such a fashion will continue to amaze us. It always baggled our mind. As Paul expressed in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9, this grace of God continues to amaze us. He said, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor, so that you, by his poverty, might become rich. Now Jesus came down in a very lowly fashion, he was born in Bethlehem to an ordinary couple, Joseph and Mary, in a very humble place, the manger, where animals are kept. Now, nobody will expect that any human being, even how poor he is, would he or his wife will deliver in a, such a humble setting. But the Lord Jesus Christ was born in a manger. So we decorate our homes with a manger, ordinary place, yet it became very special because of the Lord Jesus Christ was born in that manger. You know, our lives are so ordinary. Nothing special until the Lord Jesus Christ become our Savior. Until we receive Him, our lives become different. Our lives have meaning. Our lives have purpose. You see, he became poor in order that we might become rich. I feel that this should be this. This should be the focus of our celebration of Christmas, especially in this uh, post-COVID time, or we are coming out from the pandemic. Although there are some or so many cases right now, but thank God for the the opportunity and the the time that we can. Celebrate Christmas now with our friends and loved ones face to face. Some of us are enjoying our Christmas day with family and friends. Some are traveling, some are on holiday just to enjoy the time together, which we have missed 
um, years ago. I mean, three years ago, we were isolated. We were on lockdown. And thank God that God has opened us this opportunity to reconnect again with our loved ones and friends. But let's remember that the most important thing in this Christmas is not about the food, the fun, the the material things that we receive, although those are not wrong by itself, but don't substitute the spiritual blessings that we we have in Christ by this transient um, material things in this world. The, the, this Christmas will celebrate our spiritual riches in Him. Let's not be carried away by the momentary glitters of this world. We have obtained an inheritance. According to Paul, we have been, been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. This is what he said in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 11. So like Paul, let us look not to the things that are seen. Why? Because the things that are seen are temporal, but the things that are not seen, they are eternal. And as Moses expresses faith in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 26, let us cherish Christ's greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt or the treasures of the world. So this Christmas, I just want to remind ourselves, let's focus on our spiritual riches in Christ. It doesn't matter whether you have gifts from somebody or you receive some special gifts from someone this Christmas. What is important is that you have a certain that you have received this special gift, the best gift, the Lord Jesus Christ, so that we will say, thank God for this unspeakable gift. Have you received this gift? The Lord Jesus Christ is the best gift this Christmas. He is the gift from God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, you and me, everyone else, will believe in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. Let us pray. Father, Thank you for this Christmas time. Thank you for today. Thank you that you have given us the opportunity to reconnect with our friends, family members, and colleagues. And we can gather together now without restriction, Lord. Thank you for bringing us back this privilege. And help us not to forget that the most important thing is to focus on Jesus. He is the message or the most important person in during Christmas. Help us to recognize that he is the best gift for each one of us. And I pray that if there are a few who listen to our podcast who have not yet trusted the Lord Jesus Christ, that you may give them, Lord, the, the understanding, open their eyes, that they will be able to see their need of Jesus and believe in Jesus, and they will be saved wonderfully. Thank you for the message that you love us and that we can have eternal life by believing in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen.